We are the Spokane Prairie Tech Change Makers, and we are, and we are presenting to you Safe Internet Use by Joseph, Johnny, and myself, Rowan. <coughs> Does anyone in here know what a VPN is? Does anyone here use one? <laughs> For people who don't know what a VPN is, a VPN, or virtual private network, is a mechanism for establishing a secure connection between two networks using an insecure browser or source, such as the public internet. Some reliable VPNs are NordVPN, Norton, and Surfshark. And you may be wondering, how does a VPN work? A VPN protects and hides your IP address by allowing the network to redirect it through a configured server that is ran by a VPN host. <coughs> this means that when you browse online, the VPN becomes the source of data, not you. Also, VPNs turn your data into a sort of gibberish. So if someone was able to get hands on your data, they wouldn't be able to do anything with it or would have a very hard time. So, um, you want to know like what websites are safe? And by knowing that, you want to know what insecure websites are. So basically examples of insecure websites or, or things that happen on insecure websites are spam, uh, page redirects, <laughs> and uh, search engine warnings. <laughs> now, to further keep yourself safe, you want to have passwords and you want to create strong passwords. And so, in order to create strong passwords, you want to use uppercase and lowercase letters. You, would, you usually want to interchange those. You want to use numbers and symbols. And uh, generally, you want your password to be at least 12 characters, but it usually depends on how long it is with what information you're using the password for. Now, when you have all of those passwords, it's hard to manage. And so, you don't want to just write them down on a piece of paper and hide it under your mattress. You want to use password managers. So, basically, um, password managers hide all of your passwords under one really, really strong password that you create. And that's called a master password. And those, and that one master password usually wants to be anywhere from 26 to 32 characters long. And like we said before, you want to interchange upper and lowercase letters. You want to you want to stay away from common words and phrases. You want to use numbers and symbols, and you don't want to use like your dog's name or someone's name who's close to you. You want to have it just be really random. That makes it harder to crack for hackers. So we've talked about ways that you can protect your digital information using VPNs and ways that you can keep your account secure using strong passwords and storing them in a password manager. But what if your passwords get stolen anyways? You don't want your information to be leaked online. A great way to add a second layer of security on your accounts is by using 2FA or two-factor authentication and SMS or short message service authentication. What these do is add a second layer of protection on your accounts by requiring a unique and extra code after you enter your password. So, when you go to a website or application that you have enabled two-factor authentication on, after entering your password, you will be prompted to enter a six to eight digit code that will be sent to your email, text message, or to an authenticator app on your phone. All this does is once again, add a second layer of protection to your accounts, so it's essential in keeping your information safe. Now, 
we've talked about ways that you can keep your information safe, but what about ways that you can get information from the internet? So that's what the internet's for, right? An easy way to denote the kind of information you're going to get from a website is by looking at the website's domain suffix. The domain suffix is the last part of the domain name, and all this does is tell you what business or entity controls the website. If you're looking for information for a research paper, you want to go to a .edu website. This would be for a school in higher education, such as college. If you were going to shop online, you'd be going to a .com website. Those are for commercial businesses. If you were going to a lower education site, such as elementary schools, or if you're going to, say, the 4-H website, you'd be going to a .com website. And, .org, .org. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you, when, if you were looking for a government paper for work, say, you'll be going to a .gov website. Remember, keeping your information safe online is essential in this new digital age. In order to do that, passwords and keep them in password managers, use a safe and reliable VPN, stay away from malicious sites, and protect all of your accounts with two-factor authentication.